What makes Coral Island different? What does this game bring over other farming simulators? Today I'm going to be breaking down some of the best game mechanics and features of Coral Island. Hey, I'm Tom Capo, and in today's video I'm going to be exploring Coral Island, a new farming simulator that we talked about here before on the channel. Previously I talked about what makes this game unique compared to Stardew Valley and explored its storyline and narrative. However, today I'm going to be giving an in-depth breakdown to some of the game mechanics and features in Coral Island. As a big Stardew Valley fan, I was really intrigued by Coral Island, and I feel like many of the features in today's video are reasons why the Kickstarter did so well. With all that said, let's go on to the first amazing feature of Coral Island. Number 1 the community center projects. The community center is a hub for town activities and contains rooms such as the library, the museum, and the laboratory, which I will touch on later in the video. Outside of the community center, there is a notice board, which features three main boards, the calendar, town projects, and town errands. Just like Stardew Valley, the calendar will show events and errands will be islanders asking for items for money. The new feature of the board is projects, which we got to see a glimpse of in the trailer of Coral Island. From this, we saw three main projects, the community garden, the recycling center, and the museum. The community garden is the project that we saw for the longest time in the trailer and is described as a public garden for the community to share their work and harvest. Produce may include vegetables, fruit and flowers. Not only does this area seem like a place where you can grow crops with islanders, it may also be a hub for gaining new blueprints for buildable items in Coral Island. The project that we see in the trailer requires 50,000 gold, 100 wood, 100 stone and 100 of a certain gem found either through diving or mining. This will likely take time to complete However, the reward is huge. For completing this project, you gain experience points, which link to skill trees, which we've seen a brief part of. If you'd like a video all about skill trees and experience points, let me know in the comments. Projects bring the community closer as you start to build up the island and Scarlet Town. Feature number two, 99 save slots. If you're a player who loves to restart farming sims every week, or wants to have a save romancing every single marriage candidate, then fear not. In Coral Island, there'll be 99 save slots. This allows you to explore every character in depth, or explore each save in a different direction. This was confirmed by a mod over on the Coral Island Reddit, and personally, I think it's a great feature. There's a lot of marriage candidates in Coral Island, and now I can have a save romancing every single one. <laughs> wow, player. Feature number three, diving and the lab. Diving is a massive unique feature which brings a new element to Coral Island. I did mention this in my previous video, but if you missed that, here's a breakdown of diving. Your aim when diving is to clean the ocean, restore the coral reefs, and find kelp, chests, pearls, and other underwater scavengeable items. Take these to the laboratory and they will be converted into super coral, which prevents the island from a changing climate. I think diving in Coral Island will be integral, as climate change in this game seems to be a big element of the narrative. One new feature that we've learned about in the lab is the ability to trade process kelp to permanently upgrade the quality of your products. You can choose between upgrading seed saplings, seedlings, fodder or bait and you'll have to choose an order to upgrade them in. This upgrading system seems to be from regular silver to gold with gold items selling for more money than silver or regular items. The lab in Coral Island seems significant to the game's narrative and I'm super looking forward to interacting with the two characters who work in the lab, Ling and Sarah. Before we get into the fourth amazing feature, I create content all around farming simulators like Stardew Valley and other cozy games just like this one. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing to the channel. I also have an alpha code for Coral Island, so I'll be making a video on that when it releases. Now back to the video. Feature number four, weather cycle and time slider. We've already learned from the Kickstarter that Coral Island will have a weather cycle of sun, wind, rain, storms, and snow. The game features a day and night cycle with dynamic lighting. Coral Island also has a time slider, which allows you to set the pace of the passing of time. This is really all we know about this feature. However, I believe that it'll be good for new players and also experienced players. For new players, setting the passing of time to slow will allow more to be explored and will allow you to learn more about the game in the early phases. For experienced players and farming sim fans, increasing the passing of time will create a new challenge and could make it a challenge for any speedrunners working off the fastest passing of time cycle. On top of this, I would love to see a dynamic weather cycle where days can starve sunny and turn to rain or snow. This could keep the player on their toes about the weather and changing dynamic of days where the weather is set to change midway through the day. Maybe I want that because it's what I'm used to in England. Feature number five, new pets. We all love a companion in farming simulators and Coral Island only expands on this game feature. Your pet in Coral Island can be a monkey, lizard, fox, or rabbit. Don't worry if you want a dog or cat as these options are still built into Coral Island, but having more options will make each playthrough a little bit more special. Just like Stardew Valley, you can pick one pet per playthrough, so choose wisely. There are also mythical pets which will be unlocked in Coral Island in the late game. The only known one is the dragon. However, these colors are set to be changed as this element gets more developed. 
Feature number six, bug catching. Coral Island features bug catching, which I believe to be a similar game mechanic to Animal Crossing New Horizons. This feature was unlocked with one of the stretch goals of the Coral Island Kickstarter. We know that there are 30 bugs that you can catch and document them all in the town's community center or museum. The Coral Island Kickstarter says pop your net in the backpack and get ready to catch some bugs. From this, it seems like the game mechanic will be similar to Animal Crossing New Horizons. However, we will have new bugs to catch. We've seen the designs for four bugs already. And we also know about the blue morpho and leaf beetle, but haven't seen these designs yet. It'll be very interesting to see all the bugs in the game, and I hope that there are some hard bugs to catch, kind of like the legendary system for fish in Stardew Valley. Feature number seven, seasonal outfits. Another feature of Coral Island Kickstarter was the stretch goal to give NPCs different outfits for every single season. This makes for 170 outfit designs and will differentiate each season from the last alongside the weather and items you can collect per season. In the Kickstarter, we can see that the devs have assigned color tones, which I assume is similar to a color palette. They say that this will bring the NPCs and their overall game more alive. We have only seen the designs for Alice, Lily, Raphael in their seasonal outfits, but knowing that every islander in Coral Island will have them is super exciting for me, and I'm probably gonna change my outfits every single season, just like them. Feature number eight, kids grow up. Another Kickstarter stretch goal that was announced was to allow kids to grow up in Coral Island. This affects the kids in Scarlet Town, just like Zoe, who we can see here. It's believed for this to go on to the teenage years. The section of this that I'm most looking forward to is having this happen to my own kids in the game. As they develop, they will have their own personalities and interests. The player can impact this as they grow up or let them explore the world on their own. The traits are not tied to the spouse that you marry, meaning that your own decisions will have a greater impact on their choices. With this feature, we will see additional storylines and relationship developments throughout Coral Island. Feature number nine, 70 recipes. There will be plenty of items to cook in Coral Island with many of the game's recipes coming from the setting of Asia. On the crowdfunder, it stated that after building a kitchen, there will be 70 recipes to learn, including papaya, lade, and cauliflower cheese casserole. Gather all the cooking utensils and try them all. I'm super excited to try out all the recipes and wonder if some recipes will provide skill buffs just like in Stardew Valley. Feature number 10, mod support. One of the Kickstarter stretch goals was for mod support. When this was released, the Coral Island teams released an update on modding in the game. However, this gave away a small amount of information about what elements will be modded in Coral Island. All we know is that a full-time developer will be assigned to expand the moddable parts of the game. I believe that Stairway Games, the creator of Coral Island, will be listening to players to bring suggestions to which elements they should mod first. They say that they are extremely excited to see what the modding community will create for Coral Island. Mods will only expand Coral Island and make for more replayability of this game. My personal favorite feature is one that I mentioned in my previous video. Coral Island is exploring a new adventure in a new region. With the game being set in Asia, this brings new biomes, fruit, recipes, and most importantly, new storylines. I'm also interested to see how Stairway Games gets on with implementing the stretch goals and other new features to Coral Island. Already there seems like such detail and precision in what they are creating, and I'm super excited to see how far Coral Island can push the farming sim genre. If you want to keep up with Coral Island news or any other farming sim content, consider subscribing to the channel. Which of the 10 features of Coral Island are you most looking forward to? Drop it down in the comments. I've been Capo, and I'll see you next time.